under attack on every hand. They are not attacking other religions. They are attacking the cross, nativity scenes, anything that resembles the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This morning, as we go into this word, we're going to go to Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, beginning at the second verse. And we want to lay out a text today because the king is coming. And if the king is coming, we need to get ready. If you have someone coming over for dinner and they're just relatives, and you're familiar with them, you tell them to come on in and kick your shoes off and just make yourself at home. Mm -hmm. But when the king is coming, right. you need to call Mary Maids and let them come out and help you with the dust buster. Places you normally don't wipe, you need to wipe. Y'all not in there, are you? Because when the king is coming, you want to have everything in order. Why do you want things in order? You want it in order because the king is worthy. We're talking about Jesus the King. But in Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, beginning at the second verse. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there is word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Now, it is my responsibility and every pastor and every minister's responsibility, the scripture said to stand in the gate of the Lord's house. Now, I don't necessarily have to stand at the front door, but I have a PA system. And the minute you step through that door, you need to hear the gospel being preached. You need to hear gospel songs. If you walked up to the door and you heard Bobby Blue Bland, you would wonder what house you were in. <laughs> Bobby Blue Bland has his place, but not here. Help me let it go. And, uh, but he said, proclaim, preach, teach the, these words. You need to hear the word of the Lord. All Judea, not just this little community here, but all of the surrounding area. And he says in the third verse, what? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. God of Israel, amend your ways. Now we need to amend our ways. We need to change the way that we do things, the way that we think, the way we conduct ourselves. Say, that's about me. See, see, I'm not supposed to pick out stuff on you. I should have been my ways. For the Bible says you can have a pole in your eye trying to see a splinter in your brother's eye. And we have many people have this big giant pole in their eye. But they can see a splinter. Y'all not here. <laughs> Y'all better stay with me today. So then, he says, amend your ways and your doings. That's you. Tell me, I said, that's just you. You need to change you. And what? Read it. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Now, if you want to dwell in a place, dwell gives the idea of get along. See, at our homes, we're not dwelling. It's supposed to be a dwelling. But it's no dwelling at the house. You in one room, she in another room. Some of them got him in one room and another him in another room. It's no dwelling. Y'all better help me with this. He says that cause you to dwell in this place. You don't have to fall out with folks at this place and run to another place and keep going from place to place because you can dwell right where you are. You don't need another husband. You don't need another wife. You just need to get right with that. We got. I'll get an amen before the morning. But he says what? Trust ye not in living words. Lying. Lying. I'm sorry, lying words. See, we're going to have to stop putting confidence in lies. You know your face is not smooth as a piece. But when he tell you that, <laughs> Fella, you know you're not fine. You have tummy. You have handles. She telling you how fine you are. Don't trust in the lying words. Y'all in there with me? But God is telling his people that come into his house, stop trusting in lies that are being proclaimed. 
proclaim in his house. Amen. Read what he says. Saying the temple wait, of wait, the Lord. Wait, wait, wait. Stop right there. Somebody said the temple of the Lord. Temple of the Lord. Now what, they, what is he saying now? The church. The church. How many times does he say it? Read it. The temple of the Lord. That's two times. Read it. The temple of the Lord. All the church. The church. I'm, I'm going to church. I'm, I'm in church. I sing in church. I'm at church. I'm going to take my children to church. My family going to. The church can't save you. It takes Jesus Christ to save you. You have been trusting in line with just because you come to church. You go to work proud, bragging about I went to church yesterday. The church. The temple. The temple. No salvation in coming to church. You don't get any points from God for coming to church. You are passing church coming to church. Because when you pass the nursing home, you pass church. When you pass the sick and the shut in, you pass church. Help me with this. When you pass the jail and the prison and came into here, you pass church. But you trust in the land word. Oh, I, I'm going to be at church today. I'm going to midday prayer and I'm going to be there Wednesday night church, the church, the temple, the temple. There's always thinking that that brings some kind of points with God. But read what he said. For if you thoroughly amend your ways. No, no, no. But what you need to do is completely change your ways. It has nothing to do about coming to church, working in church, doing in church. It's about you and me changing our ways. If your ways have not changed, I guarantee you, you're not going to go back with him when he comes. He's given us all the opportunity. I can turn my collar backwards. I can spend hour after hour serving the temple, serving the things of God, this activity, that activity. It has nothing to do with whether or not I can go back with him unless I mend my ways. Stop letting people tell you you can't help but do wrong. We're going to read it in the words. It's people have been taught that. You have been trusting in lying words. Come to Christ and now that's it. You, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Read what the word says. And your doings. Uh -huh. If you thoroughly execute. Thoroughly. Yes. Yeah, come on. Between a man and his name. Yeah, yeah. You want to be fair between folk. You can't take sides with folk just because they're your friend and your relative. If somebody in church fall out with somebody, you fall out with a close at your pal. Read what he said. If you oppress not the stranger. Now, the stranger of those individuals, not only that you don't know, but even the foreigner. We have a thing here in America where we have people coming across our borders illegally. They are foreigners, but they're illegal. And we need to do something about it. Y'all listening to me? And he says, don't oppress the foreigner. But the Bible said that the law is for what? The law lists. Whenever we, he says, if you oppress not the stranger, or whatever, go ahead, the what? The, the, father. the fatherless, that's the, not necessarily just orphans. There are a lot of children right here in this ministry. Daddies don't come to church. Some of their daddies are incarcerated. Some of their daddies at home watching the football game. The father is not active in their life. And many times, y'all may not know this, but sometimes children even get oppressed by people because the daddy isn't here. And some of them are oppressed. Those that have parents, they'll go with this. Because they know that parent don't get crazy with them. Some of y'all don't mess with some folks, kids, because you know the parents get crazy with you. 